Hello and welcome to this video on how to run a Monte Carlo simulation study in M+. For those of you who are new to this channel, in this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials often related to a structural equation modeling and latent, other latent variable models using the M+ software or other software. So if this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and check out the description for additional uh, videos and other resources. In this video here, I want to show you the syntax or code that you can use in M plus to run a Monte Carlo simulation study based on a simple regression model. Why would we want to do something like that? I have a separate video explaining or in which I discuss um, why Monte Carlo situations can be useful and what they are used for. So um, check out that video as well. You can find the link in the description for this video here. So just real quick, in general, Monte Carlo simulation studies can be useful if you want to find out, for example, whether a given structural equation model or other type of model can be estimated with a given sample size. So for example, will you have a large enough sample for reliable unbiased parameter estimates for unbiased standard errors for reliable fit statistics? Will you have sufficient statistical power for showing um, effects that you want to show in your study? So will there be enough power for statistical significance of effects that you think are non-zero in your population? Those are all things that we can study with a Monte Carlo simulation and that's often useful, especially when we have a more complicated structural equation model for which there's no easy answer to the question as to which sample size may be sufficient for the model. So and I want to show you the principle here based on a very simple regression model with two predictor variables and then you can um, transfer this idea to more complex models such as factor models or structural equation models or pretty much any other model that you could be um, estimating or analyzing in the M plus software. You can see that one command here in the M plus syntax that is different from the commands that you would use normally when running a model in M plus is the Monte Carlo command. So normally we would have a data command, we would have a variable command where we um, tell M plus what the data set is and what the variable names are. But here um, we, since we're simulating data, we're not referring to a specific data set. Instead, we're, so we're generating our own data with this input file, but we still have to tell M plus about the variable names. And that is done in the Monte Carlo command. So here I um, base my si simulation on three variables. X1 and X2 are predictor variables, and Y is the dependent variable. Of course, those names are arbitrary. Also, the order of the variables in the list is arbitrary. And so I chose those variable names to be in line with the typical regression notation. The n observation subcommand then in the Monte Carlo command um, uh, allows us to specify the sample size that we want to use in each replication of the simulation. And so that's where you would specify the target sample size. For example, if you wanted to find out whether a sample size of 30 individuals is sufficient to um, estimate this regression model, whether you have enough power, whether your um, parameter estimates are reliable, whether your standard errors are valid, then um, so you would specify the sample size of 30 here to figure out whether 30 is enough or any other sample size that you might want to study. In contrast, the nreps subcommand here refers to the number of replications, meaning how many Monte Carlo samples of size 30 will be drawn in the simulation from our known population model that we specify below. So in this case, I'm running the simulation with 1000 replications. You could specify more or fewer depending on what um, you think or how you feel. I feel that 1,000 is typically enough. If you want more, you could do more on modern computers. It's typically not a problem to run simulations with um, more replications unless you have a very complex model, you have a large sample size, and so on. 
In the model population subcommand, we then specify our model that we want to simulate from. And what is important here is that for each parameter of the model, you have to give a population value uh, of your choice. And that's maybe the most complicated part of any simulation to figure out what are meaningful parameter values. So how should I set my parameter values? And that's often tricky because we may not know what to assume about all those regression coefficients, and the error variances, and so on. And sometimes you can get some guidance from previous studies that have used the same variables or similar variables, or that have found effect sizes for similar um, variables, and then you can use those as um, a guide for um, guiding the choice of the parameter values. So here I just made some up and I did it in a way that those regression parameters are standardized because that simplifies the interpretation here of this model. You don't have to uh, do it in this way. Um, you can just give unstandardized parameter values. Um, I just made the parameters standardized, so to say, by making sure that all the parameters taken together imply um, a covariance structure where the observed variances in the population model are equal to one. And so that's not a must. You can also choose different values that where the variables are not standardized. You can see here what is specified first in my population model are the regression coefficients or more specifically the slope coefficients of that linear regression model. How does M plus know it's a linear regression model? It knows that because the default is that the variables are continuous. And so when you use continuous outcome variables, then you will have a linear regression model by default in M+. If you didn't want that, you would have to specifically define variables as categorical or other to make sure that then you use something like a logistic regression model or something different. So here you can see the first regression coefficient for x1 is set to 0.8. So this is, in this case, it's a standardized coefficient. So that's a fairly strong coefficient. The coefficient for x2, the second predictor variable, is set to 0. So this, this is a case where we have one predictor that um, has a substantial uh, relationship with the dependent variable, and the other one has a relationship of 0. So that could be a redundant predictor. You can see later that the predictors in this population model assumed to be pretty strongly correlated, so there could be redundancy such that x2 doesn't explain anything above and beyond x1 in this model. So this allows us, for example, to check the um, type 1 error rate for x2, whether, so say, we would incorrectly assume that this is a significant predictor. We could find that out, and I'll show you that in a subsequent video when I discuss the output for this type of analysis. So on the one hand, we can, for example, take a look at the power for detecting the 0.8 effect of the first predictor given a sample size of 30. And then we can also take a look at type 1 error rate for the second predictor, which has a population um, regression coefficient of 0. So that should not be detected at, as a significant predictor, ideally. So those are things that we can look at. And then also we can look at whether those regression coefficients are properly estimated to begin with. So will we get on average across those 1,000 replications of size 30 each, will we get 0.8 or something that is close to 0.8 for the regression coefficient of the first predictor that would show us that this regression coefficient is unbiased um, or can be estimated in a, um, an unbiased way. And we can also take a look at standard errors for these regression coefficients and see whether they are um, uh, estimated without standard error bias. Other than the regression coefficients, we also have to specify the variances for the exogenous variables or predictor variables. So in this case, that would be x1 and x2. And here I assume that they are standardized, so they have unit variances each, and that's indicated by this statement here, x1 hyphen x2 star 1. The star is used to assign a population value under model population. 
And then I also have to give the residual variance for the endogenous variable, and then together with the standardized coefficient of 0.8, then that um, results in a model implied variance of the dependent variable y of also 1, because 8 0.8 squared is 0.64, and then to take in together with a 0.36, that's equal to 1. That gives you the model implied variance and corresponds to an R squared of 0.64 in the population for the dependent variable, which is a pretty strong effect, 64% variance accounted for. The means and intercept in this model are assumed to be zero, so I set those population values to zero here in the brackets. Those brackets refer to the means for exogenous variables and intercepts for dependent or endogenous variables. And again, this is because I assumed that the variables here are standardized, which you don't have to do. And then lastly, we have the command here that I already showed you briefly earlier, where we set the correlation of the exogenous variables to 0.5. And that shows you why it is kind of useful to assume that the variables are standardized or have unit variances, because otherwise this value would be the covariance. So if they weren't standardized to a variance of 1, then the star 0.5 would indicate the covariance. And that is something that is more difficult to interpret. We like to work with correlations more than covariances because they're easier to interpret. And so having standardized x1 and x2 to a variance of 1 allows me to then set the correlation directly rather than the, or the correlation then is equal to the covariance. So that would then be the correlation of the ex exogenous variables in my model. Now those are all the parameters that are in the model. For each parameter we have to give a population value like I did. You can't leave one out, otherwise M plus will say you need to specify all of the um, population parameter values. And again, this can be based on previous research or your guess, your best guess about what these values may look like in your study in the future. This is often something that is a little bit more tricky to figure out because we don't know oftentimes what values make the most sense. Now, next is the, the model that is actually fit to your um, uh, replications. And in this case, I'm specifying a correct model. So I'm running the same model that I'm also um, generating the data from. And so I can then just copy and paste my commands from model population to model. And that's exactly what I did here. And what is useful about this is that M plus will then use those parameter values as starting values, and that can speed up your simulation because then those values, since the model is correctly specified, will tend to be already close to the maximum likelihood parameter estimates for this model. And so then each replication will converge very quickly because you give good starting values, so to say, that are based on the true population parameter values. Now you can also simulate um, incorrectly specified models in M+. Plus. This is not something that I want to discuss here, but notice that this is also a possibility. In this case, we're simulating a correctly specified model, and our interest is then often mostly in determining statistical power for the effects of interest, in determining parameter bias, standard error bias, coverage, um, things like that, the performance of fit statistics. And I'll show you that in the next video how the output, what the output in M plus looks like for this model and how we interpret those results. I hope you like this video. Please check out the description. I also have a longer um, workshop that is free that you find in the description where I discuss sample size planning in M plus by means of simulations and I show this for a more complicated model in more detail in that um, little workshop that you can find in the description. If you like, you can also leave a comment in the comment um, section and I'll see you next time.